Jason Momoa. That's one of your comparables, right? Oh, my God. Yes. He's been prominent since 1999. <sighs> he was in Baywatch in 99. Didn't know that. 44 episodes on Baywatch. Do you know that? It, you can look it up if you did. I, I'll, I'll go with that. Right. But you remember him on Baywatch. Uh-huh. Actually, didn't watch Baywatch, but right. he certainly had the physique for it, so. Uh, Stargate Atlantis. Jesus. He was on that. Many episodes. Right. Did you know that? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. He played Conan the Barbarian. Oh, yeah. In TV or film? Film. It was a film. Okay. I don't, I I don't have Mr. Actor. Momoa's um, resume memorized, so. No, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to understand how you came to the conclusion they're, they're comparable, because I I'm, I'm just want to spend a few times, a few minutes talking about uh, Mr. Momoa's career. Yeah. Um, Game of Thrones was one of the most popular things on TV. I heard about that for show. For a period of three years, correct? Yes, a he was. A period of three and years. Game of Thrones. Yes, he was. Yep. And to sneak he's Aquaman, this, dude. right? Yes, he is. Right. And he's what? the title character in Aquaman. Right. Yes. Yeah. And he was actually Aquaman in a movie before the Aquaman movie started. That's true. You, you mean that? Justice League and other yes. things? Yes. Like Batman versus Superman. Dawn of Justice. What, wasn't he in that as Aquaman? I didn't see that one. Didn't see it? No. Miss Heard wasn't in that movie, was she? Not that I know of, no. No. I don't even remember him. And he was in, that in movie. both Justice League movies. Correct? Yeah. Uh, and he's in Aquaman 2. Right. Yes. They used him in the second Lego movie. Right? Yes. Dune. Um, he's one of the most heroic characters in the recent Dune blockbuster. Very true. Which happened post Aquaman. He was even cloned right. multiple times because of how heroic in he fact, was. In fact, according to the lore. Likely he's character. He's not the lead, though. No. In Dune, no, he's not the lead. Did you ever read Dune? Pardon? Did you ever read Dune? I know, but I've seen the movie. No. Do you understand whether his character will come back from the dead in the third movie? It will. As again, I didn't read the book, so he might. I don't know. I'm just talk, we're just talking about that one movie. That so might that's be a bit of a spoiler. Yeah. Oh, man. No. Dude. No <laughs> way. Yeah, He's he, one of the principal leads in the times. new Fast and Furious franchise movie, Fast X, right? Duncan, I, I, I don't know that for sure, no. Okay. Uh, but that's not the career path that, that, that Ms. Hurd has had. She's never been the title character in a movie. That's a good way she to say it. She hasn't spent uh, years on television. She did, what, eight TV shows? Eight single episodes of TV? Again, I don't have the resume. If you want to show it to me, we can count them together. All right. All right. Uh, I love how he says that. Mr. Momo. Holy shit. Remains well liked even though he's engaged in a recent divorce from another actor that's very that's correct, true right i don't know i don't follow his fan base you don't follow jason momoa but you use him as a comparable to to come up with a 45 i said i don't follow game. his fan base i i understand him as a prominent actor in the business but i don't follow his fan base but like his social is activities fan, would be relevant isn't fan base one of the things that you analyze of course you yeah. can look at numbers but i don't keep a watch on his social media feeds all right all right oh my god all right you all right indicated that uh gal gadot is in Wonder Woman. Oh, no. Yes, she's a star. She's, in fact, Wonder Woman. I yeah, know, she's good, too. Yeah. All right. She's wow. the title character, and there's been now multiple Wonder Woman movies, right? True. I heard the second yes. one was not good. Yeah. And even before that, she was in it. franchise films. Which one are you referring to? Fast and Furious. Excuse me, I honestly don't don't remember her being that as yeah, one of the main characters. I know it's The Rock and you, you, you didn't even know she was in the Fast and Furious franchise. I've seen it on a resume, but I didn't. I again, right. I'm not a fan of the fan of Fast and Furious. All right, you'll agree with me that Wonder Woman is a more prominent like role than Mira. 
<laughs> if you're going to talk about apples, apples in that exact movie, yes. Right. What about, does Mira have any, you know, self-titled franchise films? Not yet. No. Not yet. And Ms. Goodell played a much bigger role in the movie they were in together, the Justice League movie. In what movie they were in together? Oh, in Justice League? Yeah. She uh, did, yeah. I haven't counted the, the screen time, so I can't really well, of say. Of course she did. She okay. was in the Justice League. Mara's not. You How's it even a question? That another person that you uh, compared Ms. Hurd with is uh, Zendaya. Right? Zendaya, yeah. yeah. Person so famous she goes by one name. I guess when you have a name that's a Z, it works, I guess. Yeah. She's... She's been on the Disney Channel since she's 13 years old. Right. Uh -huh. Right? She won an Emmy. Yes, she did. Right. She was singing and dancing and swimming from trapezes in The Greatest Show, right? It's a yes. lot. Yeah. Uh, she's now been in multiple Spider-Man movies. There it is. Yes. Also she's in 10 you. years younger than your client. Right. But this is a person that you deem to comparable. Well, as I, I was explaining uh -huh. to you how I chose them, when you look at superhero characters, there's not that many to pull from. So I just tried to, I worked on pulling characters that were in superhero movies oh, here that we were go. about the same age here we range go. within 10 years, as you've we're noticed, circling the drain. Uh, and also just where her career would have gone. I said that they were comparable. They're not identical. So you can just look at what they're, career has done either before that superhero movie than in others or the one they were in and then you look at where her career should have gone even though she may not have been at the stature of a Zendaya at that time uh -huh. you can still look at it as a comparable trajectory of what happens when you're in a blockbuster yeah. movie it's just a reference point it's not meant to be identical they're not meant to be the same people or not even have the exact same career it's meant to be a reference point simple as that so far everybody we've looked at have been in more blockbuster movies than, than Ms. Hurt. But Ms. Hurt was also in the biggest blockbuster movie, and the light that shines on Jason Momoa will also shine on her. Apparently not. So you not. have to look at it in context of the biggest movie that DC, the DC Comics universe. is. And also one of the biggest box office films ever, probably within the top 10, because I've looked at 24, it. 24. Right? So 24. that light was going to shine brighter on her. Um, than someone who wasn't in She's that She's not happy And again, about it this. would have just helped her in her she career move not forward, happy. not stalled it, and be at, in her world be silent afterwards. For the jury to accept your damage analysis, they would have to agree with you that Ms. Hurd was on the precipice of a meteoric rise. That's the word you used, right? Actually, no, I didn't. I, I did use Meteoric with someone like, let's say, Gal Gadot or Zendaya, but I, I actually gave you a range and gave the jury a range that they weren't all going to have a Meteoric rise. Of Some course. of them would be smaller, right? And so I, what the numbers that I gave you do not represent a Meteoric rise. A Meteoric rise is when Jason Momoa goes from, I don't know, $4 million, $5 million to a $50 million payday. That's, that's, a, that's a, a meteoric shift in our business. But when someone has contracts that actually go from $1 million to the first one, $2 million, and then $4 million, mm -hmm. that is standard for a franchise that is perceived to do well. Mm -hmm. And so I based those calculations on very specific numbers that were already contracted. I wanted to stay within reality and look at the numbers that were already contracted for Ms. Heard and just move out forward on one film a year, maybe a TV show here or there, and some endorsement contracts, which is very typical for an actor in our business to make that kind of money. It just is what happens. Uh -huh. So the example you just used is somebody went from $1 million to $2 million to $4 million. Your client has never had a contract that exceeds $2 million, correct? Incorrect. All right. In the Aquaman, Justice, it's actually the Justice League contract because they're associated. So Justice League, uh, Aquaman, she was paid $1 million. Uh, Then in Aquaman 2, it was written that she was going to earn $2 million. And if there's another one, it was written in the terms that she would get $4 million. So it actually was a contract that Ms. Heard signed with the studio. Right. That's an but option. The hasn't been made. Yeah, Aquaman 2 hasn't even come out yet. So the right. third one is still on deck, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Probably not going to be a Justice League too. Your client's never been paid $2 million for a movie she, she, she appeared in. She was paid $2 million for Aquaman. Right. Two. Aquaman 2. And she's never been paid $4 million. She was contracted to be paid, and when the movie goes, that's what she will be paid. So that's what I said. She was if on the, the They pledged $4 million. Right, but if, if Aquaman 2 does even nearly she, as well as Aquaman 1, upset. there's going to most likely be a third one. So we can look at that as a precedent that was set in, in writing, actually. Uh-huh. If a movie makes seven hundred and ninety-five million dollars, that's a lot. You think there's likely to be a next one? Um, the, if it was the first or the second one, but if it's the fifth in the series, I assume that you're referring to Pirates Five. Yeah, it performed well at the box office, yes, but certainly not in comparison to some of the other ones. And that's what a studio like Disney will look at to say, has that franchise had its run, or do we need a to change studio it? Studio like it? Disney. Wants to walk away from an $800 million payday? Well, an $800 million payday well, has to be put into context to the budget that it costs to get that movie and then the well, marketing thereafter. And with the increasing costs and not only Mr. Depp's fee uh -huh. or any of the, and plus the other actors' fees, plus general production costs that are getting more expensive, then you put in the marketing costs, which are sometimes one, two, or three times the budget of the film. A film like that, a studio can spend six, eight hundred million just making and marketing the film. So it, $795 million is a lot of money. Yeah. And it seems like a really good box office, but you have to put into perspective of what's spent on production, marketing, and the overhead costs that the studio takes. So you have, again, it's all in context of what the budget of the film and the marketing of the film is. All right, let's put some more she things in context. She didn't even consider merchandising, which is huge for Disney. That's another one And use. especially yes. Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. She didn't even take she, that into consideration. Um, most recently, I guess, in Deep Water with Ben Affleck. I, I, I don't, again, I know some of the movies that she's been in, I don't remember about Deep Water. I don't, is that, a, I don't even know if that's out yet. Uh -huh. Okay. To be honest. Um, she was in the last James Bond movie. Yes, she was. Yeah. They were talking about making her the next female Bond, right? Right. After her big Star of moment, Stars Born moment, yeah, she's gotten a lot more um, big roles, which is what we had hoped for Miss Hurt. Yeah. Um, and she said that her breakout role was Blade Runner? I don't know who this it was, is. It was like the first big you know, studio movie that got a lot of attention. I believe that was the one that we can look at as a, as a marker for her, sure. Did did you watch Blade Runner 2049? Who was it? I'm a little I did. Up. She's hot. Do you know what she did in the movie? It was years ago. I don't remember exactly what she was in, what, what, what role she played, but she was in that movie, and from that, wow. her agents used that as leverage to get her more movies. You have no knowledge that her principal role in that movie was as a gigantic naked billboard? Are you saying that's the only thing she was? She was a gigantic naked billboard. She wasn't in the movie. That's the either. principal role in that movie. I, I don't. I don't remember the movie well enough to know. Okay. Um, and did you know that she was? We, we, I talked a little bit about Ben Affleck, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, he's an interesting example because it, it, he's been in a role that's been recast multiple times. Uh huh. You know that role? Are we talking about Batman? Yeah. Yeah. Batman. Sure. All right. Right. So the title character in that DC series has seen how many actors? Several. Right. Three. Michael Keaton. He was Batman. Val Kilmer. You're a movie buff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Christian Bale was Batman. I oh think he was. You're right. George Clooney was Batman. Oh my Definitely. God! Yeah. <laughs> oh is my Robert God! Robert Pattinson is now Batman. Yep, Robert Pattinson. Don't know. Okay. Um, How do you not know that? You're taking an absolutely iconic role that the DC universe has recast four, five, six times. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that just because you have the role in the first movie or the second movie doesn't mean it. you get it in the third movie or the fourth movie. Yeah. Unless it's contractual. Mm -hmm. Right. Unless it's contractual. So, now, let's look. Oh, Ana de Armas, 
She's like the new Marilyn Monroe on Netflix too, right? I, I believe so. She was also in Knives Out, which is probably even a bigger breakout role for her. Uh -huh, but right. again, I chose Blade Runner because it's a similar thing. You have to start somewhere. But Knives Out probably yeah, sure. was her big moment in time. Yeah. All right. The other person you picked was Chris Pine. Oh. Uh, Chris Pine is in a superhero movie. Too Wonder Woman. But he is in Wonder Woman. He's also well, Star Trek being a blockbuster, but not yeah. necessarily a superhero. Right? That yeah. was a huge um, one. He was in both Wonder Woman movies, right? Uh, yes, he plays love interest to Gal Gadot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. On Star Trek, in, in the Star Trek franchise. Wait, Captain Kirk, the main he guy. Plays Captain Kirk. Yeah. Right. I don't remember exact role, role that he played. I didn't see it in the movie. I just know it from his resume, to be honest. Uh, you, do you know who Captain Kirk is? Yes, I do. Right. Well, I. Uh, but you I didn't know, know that Chris Pine is is Captain Kirk in Star Trek. Uh oh. I hate to say I'm not a Star Trek fan. Okay, but I'm you be used honest, like Mr. The old Pine ones were terrible. as an example, irrespective of them. the fact you didn't even know he starred in this franchise film. I didn't know that he starred. That's why I use it again. But she's in the context of what he was. I, we can go over this a couple more times, and I'm happy to do so. Ah. All I wanted to do was look at from a small pool of people that have been in huge franchise movies or or superhero movies, and and give you a sense of what the range is or what someone's trajectory can be. Again, they 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 are not apples and apples. They're not both green apples or both red apples. I just was looking at a range. It's what we do. It's what we do in the industry. It's it's what you do to kind of. Get a sense of you how much you're going to pay an actor, yeah. what they're worth in the foreign markets and the domestic Ma markets. My question was, did you know whether he was in Star Trek? Yes, and you okay. were asking me why I chose him, is which is what this conversation is about. And again, I chose him because he was part of Star Trek and Wonder Woman, but mostly because he was in Wonder Woman. And I don't know mostly. the exact time frame of oh, which I... came first, but the fact that what in both of them is consistent with what actors of this ilk tend to do once they're in a movie like this. But you, you talk about How breakout do you role, not but you know don't know that. Which, which was his breakout role. Chris Pine's been an actor. He's been a well-liked actor. He was in both Star Trek and in uh, Wonder Woman. I think Star Trek. And Did a Star movie Trek, with Denzel Star... Washington. Pardon? Did a movie with Denzel Washington. He's um, had a good uh, career. Yeah, great career. Yeah, I felt like that was yeah. like the movie Much I, 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 than, I knew him. Then Ms. Hurt, right? She was on the precipice of a great career. Yeah, you, she hasn't had the chance to negotiate that for that yet or be in those yeah. movies yet, so we don't know yet. We're getting back to precipice. Didn't you just deny precipice a few minutes ago? I said, I thought your testimony was she was on the precipice of meteoric rise. You said, I guess. I, I didn't say meteoric. I said consistent. I don't know. She oh could have God. a meteoric rise, but I was talking oh about consistent. Oh, my God. All right. None of these people um, shit the bed. So of the, of the actors you selected, two of them are the title characters in their DC movies. Uh -huh. One of one, them. One is Aquaman. Who's the other title character? Gal Gadot. Wonder Woman, right? Right. He's yeah. Wonder Woman, yeah. and oh, and you mean Jason Momoa? Sure. Yeah. 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 So you get two title yeah. characters. You got James Kirk. And those are the people that you thought were most representative of Ms. Heard. Again, there are not that many uh, in the pool to pick from. I'm not going to put comparable actors that Jesus. haven't been in either large, what we call tentpole movies, or franchise movies, or superhero movies. So I, I wanted to work within those parameters, and that's what I did. So those are the actors I chose, yes. And to show. Okay, what the fuck happened? What happened to one my... One of the actors you chose had a much longer TV career than you, than Ms. Hurd. Again, they were all in superhero or, or franchise movies that did very, very well at the box office. And there are tons of That's actors and actresses who are in superhero movies that don't have meteor meteoric rises thereafter. Look at Ryan correct? Reynolds. Not when they're the lead character with Jason Momoa, but to your point, there are many actors Green that Lantern have wasn't no that great. career prior to a breakout role and then have a meteoric career and have had no career prior. So you don't always just look at Brie the Larson. Cast. Yeah. It's helpful. And with Miss Heard, she had good reviews. So that's what I looked at. 
But if you look at other actors and they have their first role and all of a sudden they become a superstar from one role. So that happens in our business. It just does. Yeah, yeah sure. All right. With respect to your comparable actors, you have no personal knowledge as to how much any of them were compensated over I, the period you reviewed. Incorrect. You have personal knowledge as to who? Jason uh -huh. Momoa. And you derived that personal knowledge from talking to somebody? Yes. He didn't tell you. His agent did. Okay. Ah. So what you will rely on what Mr. Momoa's agent told you, but you have no know you didn't see the contract. No, his agent is at William Morris as well, so they told me that. Uh huh. Right. And you've never seen anybody else's contracts as to what they were making. No, but in 25 years of being in this business, I understand the basis of which actors are paid when they're in blockbuster films and then they're in large budgeted studio films. So it's it's not a leap to kind of understand where, where the actor's making. And again, I really didn't want to try to be speculative in my analysis. I wanted to work with the numbers that Amber had contracted uh -huh. for already and just take it from there and said if she had done one movie a year and one series and done product endorsement, that's how I got to the number. So I wasn't looking to take her on a meteoric rise. I wasn't looking to give her the same career as Jace Momoa. Yeah. I took her numbers that her agents had, had actually negotiated and worked from there. When you say you weren't trying to give her the same career as Jason Momoa, the, the TV program that she most recently did, The Stand, she made 200000 an episode. That's what you testified to. Correct. And okay. in your damage analysis, you give her a million dollars an episode ah. had the Waldman statements not occurred. And you do it That's only because lot. you believe Mr. Momoa has gotten that in, in, in something that he's in. Right. So you are ah. giving her the same career as Jason Momoa. That's well, very again, interesting. Well, with someone like... Uh, Ms. Hurd, who was in a blockbuster film with a team at William Morris, in my discussions with William Morris, that's what they were looking to negotiate for her on other projects. So uh -huh. I got some of that information from her management team directly. So her agents were looking to get her as much money as possible? Wow, I, I think can't that's believe the job that. of an agent. They usually right. try to they, get the most money as possible. Your yeah. Your testimony is they were looking to get the money for her, but you, you need somebody willing to pay on the other side that's of that deal, true. don't you? Right, but agents are working with people in the industry and have a pulse on what, uh, have a finger on a pulse of what's going on. So Not they know always. Who's marketable and what the prices that all the streamers are paying these days? You haven't seen a single one of the endorsement contracts that you referenced, other than Miss Hurd's. No, other than again, what I was, talk yeah. I was talking to William Morris in terms of the not pricing always. that they are aware of, not only for their own clients, but what's out in the marketplace and is pretty consistent. Uh -huh. And I've also worked with other actors on other cases that have gotten similar contracts, so I'm familiar with the rates of endorsement contracts. You, you, you haven't made any reference to the actual earnings of any of these actors. Uh -huh. Again, as you do an analysis, you put together the numbers that you know from both your experience and the marketplace mm -hmm. and the agents that are working in the marketplace. So together, that's how I created those numbers and mostly using Ms. Hurd's numbers specifically and giving her a very steady career, which is what she had had prior to uh, Aquaman. Yeah, uh, and you don't have the prior earnings of any of the actors you looked at other than Ms. Hurd's. Okay. No, I don't have all the contracts. No, she's you got no idea. I'm sorry? You don't have any of that information? No. Okay. Of course not. In fact, that information, I guess aside from Mr. Momoa's, is confidential, right? Nah. Usually, Usually is, is, yeah, yeah. NDA. And the only reason you know anything about Mr. Momoa is that you, um, Ms. Hurd shares an agent? Or an right, but I, look, I've, I've also been in the industry for many years, and I know what actors get paid. Uh -huh. I talk about budgets constantly, so it's not a secret within the industry the amount that actors are in those types of movies are paid very, very well. Very, very well is, is kind You're of... You're not uh, currently working as an agent for anyone, are you? No. It's one thing to say that, and it's another to say what number it is, you know? Okay, all right, here we go. So... The salaries of these comparable actors 
Did they form some basis for your opinion? No. Okay. So your opinion, as I understand it, is that Ms. Hurd should have been able to renegotiate an existing contract. Which is standard in the industry as well as sure. yeah. with her yeah. agent specifically. Do you know if it's standard with Warner Brothers? I'm sorry? Do you know if it's standard with Warner Brothers? I don't know if it's standard at, at any of the studios, but it is standard for agents to renegotiate and oftentimes are successful when the film is done. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah right. that happens. But what you're talking about is there's an existing contract where Ms. Hurd has made a promise that she will do the next movie for, in this instance, $2 million, right? Uh-huh. Right. And what you, the agent is trying to do is to get Warner Brothers to say, hey, you should pay her more than your contract says because you like her? What, well, as Ms. Kovacevic said, also, it's standard in the industry. As Again, I've been in the industry, I've worked with agents, and I've worked with lots of lawyers, and, you know, we have conversations about what is an actor getting, or what can they do, uh -huh. or what are they going to do the next time. So, again, it's a standard in practice in the industry, especially when a film is as successful as Aquaman, that the agents will go back and renegotiate. Uh, in fact, that was conversation. Isn't the standard practice is that they would try to renegotiate, but it's up to the studio. Sure, but yeah, oftentimes sure. in a movie of such of the nature of Aquaman, they're very successful, usually. But, but the entirety of your analysis assumes a renegotiation with a studio for terms that are double what the studio had already got a promise from Miss Heard she would work for. Especially Correct. for, like, a secondary character. Like, yeah... Yeah, it's Aquaman, not Aquaman and Mara. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Have you talked Aquaman, to Walter Hamada? Yeah. Have I spoken to him? Mm -hmm. No. Do you know who he is? Yes. Who is he? He's a senior executive at Warner Brothers. Or yeah, I, I think he still is there, but certainly <clears throat> at the time of the renegotiation, he was a senior executive. Mm -hmm. And do you know whether he's the president of DC-based film productions? I think that's exactly his title, yeah. Yeah. Who's in a better position to determine whether Warren, Warner Brothers would renegotiate, you or Mr. Hamada? As again, I based this on the, on the agents that were talking to Warner Brothers about uh, Mr. Mueller. I wonder. And they I wonder who it is. About Ms. Hurd as well. Oh, okay, I'm not so sure. they, I based my information on them. Uh oh, so you, she's the, getting the, upset. The, she's getting the pressed. should be Mr. Hamada or the agents, not Mr. Hamada and me. Oh, all right. Who's in a better uh, position to, to know whether Warner Brothers would renegotiate? Objection, your calls for speculation. Just asking. I'll sustain the objection. Next right. question. Uh -huh. Do you review any testimony from Mr. Hamada? I did. What did he say? Did you understand that Mr. Hamada says that they don't, that they want to hold the, the lawyers, I mean, hold the actors to their deals? That was a philosophy that he said Warner Brothers had, yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Did you understand that Mr. Hamada said that nothing Mr. Depp did impacted her compensation? I don't remember that part of the testimony. You have it available for me to read? This is going to be the um, witnesses this week. You don't know whether Mr. Hamada testified. Did anything Mr. Depp, Mr. Read Depp the said one. about Amber Heard affect her compensation? He's teeing this shit up. Yeah, this guy is Again, coming I on. Don't, I you don't, don't remember. I don't, recall, I don't recall that testimony right. now. Yep. Oh, no, you know no, no. Mr. Hamada indicated whether he even knew who Adam Waldman was? Again, I, I don't remember the conversation about Hamada and Waldman. Or uh -huh. that. And you don't remember whether Mr. Hamada uh, made any statements as to whether 
anything Mr. Waldman said affected Ms. Hurd's compensation. In my experience, studios don't talk about what, how or why they make decisions based on publicity or conversations. They're not going to try, they're, they're going to be very protective of all their relationships. So that's just natural. Yeah, unless you can get them to testify under oath at a deposition, right? Well, even so, they're not going to say anything negative. They may uh -oh. bypass it by being positive, but they're not going to do anything that could potentially uh -oh. damage a relationship that may change or be worthwhile in the future. So that's just what a studio person does. It, Mr. Hamad is in the best position to determine whether there were chemistry issues with Ms. Hurd. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. He's the president of the company. Uh, overruled. <laughs> I don't know how involved Mr. Hamada was on a daily basis in, in terms oh, of chemistry, no. but I do know that Warner Brothers did a He's chemistry test with uh, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Momo before they even she even got the role. Oh, she went no. and did a, what they call a chemistry test. He's getting so her to, to qualify him was good chemistry because he's going to come on. And evidently there was good chemistry because she was then hired to be the romantic interest. So whatever Mr. Hamad Evidently? said during his deposition, I look at what actually happened in real life, which is she got the chemistry test and then she got the job. Evidently? Yeah, let's look what happened in real life. She went in oh, before no. and took the test. Jesus, no. Then she made a movie. Then there was an existing movie under which Warner Brothers then could then decide whether there was chemistry, right? The movie worked. It made over a billion dollars, and they're all over the poster. If they didn't think that there was chemistry, they wouldn't have put Ms. Hurd on the poster what? next to Mr. Momoa. So what? You know there were multiple posters for the Aquaman movie. Yes, and there three, always are. That's 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 standard. And that three out of the four posters, the standard posters for Aquaman, didn't even feature Ms. Hurd. Right. So when you when you make a poster at the studio, it's normal to have three or four variations because you want to appeal to different people's perspectives. So you want the romantic poster, you want the action poster, you want the superhero poster. So it's normal for them to have many posters, but the romantic poster was uh, of Ms. Hurd and Mr. Momoa. Duh! Right. And everyone, and all the others are just of Mr. Momoa. Like we, we talked about, it's Aquaman, but she was prominent in the ones that she wa that Warner Brothers She's wanted to appeal to women the and to the she romantic was interest of the consumer. Uh huh. That's crazy. What movies? She said one of them. Or I think two. Would Ms. Heard have gotten absent Mr. Waldman's statements? No, wait. She's actually only in one of them. Well, the ones we know yeah, about she's specifically only in one of them. that she was in conversations with was a movie with. Um, Gail Garcelle Bernal, I believe that's how you say his name, uh -huh. at uh, Amazon, which is what Ms. Kovacevic said. And she was also in consideration for a movie called Ambulance with Michael Bay. Um, Me too. But again, well, I only saw one uh, on the after Google the Waldman statements, nobody would talk to the agents. And so they weren't able to garner more. Oh, she also had a, a movie that she was interested in producing that a good friend of hers uh, or a friend of hers or colleague was was doing so. Uh -huh. um, there was at least those three. She's in all of them. Um, There's sharks there. But that you, I read about. those were three movies that she was being considered for. But you don't okay. know what movie she would uh, she was going to be in. Well, again, they stopped the conversation after the statement, so we don't know where they would have gone, of course. But they she was in consideration for all of them, and, but, and but given her fame from Aquaman, she would have that would have helped all those movies. So it would have made made a lot of sense. You're projecting movies way out into the future that you have no knowledge would ever have gotten made. Yes. Well, that's what we do when you talk about comparables and, and economic damages. You talk about the future. That's standard in our industry as, as a forensic expert and in the industry. That's how movies are financed, as a matter of fact, is by forecasting what happens in the future. In five what years? What connection do you draw between Mr. Waldman's statements and the reported reduction in Ms. Hurd's Aquaman 2 role. Again, it's just a, it's a, it, this, it's the timing of it all. It's uh -huh. the timing of it's it all. Just, and also they were going to take her out of the movie after the statements and then they put her back in and then there, I, I, can I talk about the emails that I read? I'm, I'm not sure at this point, but. So when you say they're going to take her out of the movie, when you have an option, you literally have the option whether to include 
the actress. Yes, right? you do. That's that's what it means. Correct. Right. So they can choose to exercise the option or not exercise the option. Entirely up to them. Correct. And uh -huh. they have that particular studio, to your knowledge, has re repeatedly recast even major figures in their DC movies. We talked about Batman. What about uh -huh. Superman? You know, I'm not. As, I, I think I'm more familiar with the Batman actors. I think there have been a couple actors who Superman, but depending on how the movie Henry performs, Cavill, yeah. if the movie doesn't perform, they'll look for other actors. Or if they want to go a different direction or reboot a franchise, they will look at different actors. So another if the movie is successful, they they're not likely to change the actors, especially not in the second one or the third one. Another reason they'll look for a different actor or actress, if the actor or actress is charged or asking too much money to play the role again, correct? Yeah, it could happen. Uh, yes, not not in figures under $10 million, but yes. Yeah. If you're asking for too much money, you might not get your role again. That's true. And your analysis assumes that Ms. Hurd could double her money. Well, her contracts doubled her money from each one to the next, so it wasn't that large a leap to do that, especially when the agents had told me that that was what had been, they were considering and what they'd been discussing. All right. Have you seen the script of Aquaman 2? Personally? Yeah. Uh, I did see a draft. I don't know what the date was or when it was or where in the succession of the rewrites it was. I did see one draft, uh -huh. yes. You don't know what Warner Brothers has in mind for that movie in terms of the kind of movie it's going to be? Oh, no. It's a superhero movie. Right. Um, Oh, it's supposed to be no. like a buddy comedy, right? I, I, I don't know. I don't know about a buddy comedy. It's an action movie, superhero movie. I don't know. Who's Patrick Wilson? Patrick Wilson. I, I, I've heard that name in terms of an actor, but I don't know Mr. Wilson. Do right. you know if he appears in Aquaman? Again, I don't, I don't know him by name. If you want to show me a picture, I can, or a clip from the movie. He was the brother, right? Do you know if Mr. Wilson appears more frequently in Aquaman than your, than your client does? Yeah. I, I don't. I didn't count the screen time when I watched the movie. It was a long, you know, even when I watched it again. This I, is I the didn't expert. Count the screen time of anybody else. I thought he was great in Aquaman. You did you read the testimony of uh, Mr. Hamada? We discussed that. Yes. You disregarded all of it in your analysis as to her ability to renegotiate, correct? All right. Well, I, I remember the part where Mr. Hamada said that from time to time they will break their philosophy and renegotiate is what they did from with Jason Momoa time. and with Gal Gadot. So, you know, it's, it, you mean the lead go, it coincides huh. with what we know in the industry, which is yeah. it can be done. It's what they did with the two title characters yeah, the two title, in yeah. the DC universe. A little Again, bit different. I've worked in the business for a long time, and I've seen a lot of actors uh -huh. uh, renegotiate their careers. It's uh, I'm sorry, not their careers. Renegotiate their uh, their fees. Yeah, it's it's common practice, and it's certainly what the agent will think about first when a movie makes a billion plus dollars. Right. Again, focused on the agent, but it's the studio that pays the bills. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Your Honor, I have a fair amount more to do. Is to, to, yeah, continue. I'm sorry. Continue. Okay. I didn't know if we were going to 5:30 today or not. Every day is 5:30 day. Okay. Oh, she's but not excited we about this. Need to get there. Every day is 5:30. All right. Perfect. Oh All Jesus! Right. She just wants this to be over. You talked about Ms. Hurd's endorsement deal with Lori. Every day is 5:30. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. And. The, L'Oreal has concerns about using her because every time they try to use her, people re respond negatively to her. Uh-huh. I bet. Uh, people don't. The, the Depp fan base has responded. Oh. Uh, has been, has tro uh, have posted negative things about Ms. Hurd it's the fan on their base. campaigns. It's his fans. So, it's not just normal people. Did you say people. the Depp fan base? 
Well, people that were using the hashtags that were consistent with the rest of the, the death families. Yeah, but there, 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 there are justice. people posting negative things that, other than things that came from Mr. Waldman, correct? I haven't seen all the, I haven't seen all that. That was, I was just no, looking at what wait, L'Oreal, is he about to go for five? discussed and what Laurel oh, no. said in, in no, um, no, 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 no. They made, do you see L'Oreal make a word cloud of the words that were most uh, commonly associated with, with Ms. Heard in its uh, marketing campaigns? I knew they did that. I didn't see it myself, actually. Oh, no. Do you know what words there were? Again, no. We're about to find out. Here we go. Tee it up. Let's go for five. He's getting out the list. You didn't talk much about this, but in order to get to the damage analysis that you got, please, uh, the $45 million, I, I think at least in initially you suggested that Ms. Heard would have a role producing and starring in a movie and that she would make $12 million. I, I've talked about that, but in the in the latest calculation, I, uh, that was really less what I considered and more about what films and TV and endorsement deals that which she would do. The producing was something that she had wanted to do. And again, Mr. Momoa got that. So that's where the agents were discussing those figures with me. The last movie that she has a production credit for is in 2013, right? Again, I don't, I haven't memorized her resume. It was a movie called Syrup. Uh -huh. Did you ever hear of it? No. Okay. Aside from having probably seen it on her IMDb. Yeah. And soon the dark expert sets her by the, the way. production credit, right? She's an expert in I'll, this. I'll, if you say so, if, if you're reading it off witness. of her resume, I will believe you. Yes. Yeah. 2010. Okay. Right. Twelve years ago. But you, at Shit. least at some portion of the, at some point He's in right. this uh, analysis. We're of the mind that she, lawyer knows more than the expert. Yeah, recover twelve million dollars with a producing uh, role and a starring role in a movie, because that's what Mr. Momoa got. Again, the agents were just saying that those are the kinds of numbers they were looking at mm -hmm. to help her as she moved forward in her producing career. Right. Those are the kind of the numbers the agents would like her to get. Yeah. Right. But again, it's I didn't use different. that in the final analysis of my forty-five million. Yeah. So. It was just a, a discussion point because that's what the agents wanted me to consider. Sure. I bet they did. Absolutely. All right. You have testified that the breakout role for Ms. Heard was Aquaman, right? I, I didn't I say, say the say breakout role, but I used it as this, you know, a movie that it was a superhero yeah, kind of a big super deal. box office success. Um, I think that, you know, some of her other critically acclaimed movies probably helped her break into that role, which would have been The Danish Girl, and then her work in Justice League, which was a natural progression to getting to star in mm -hmm. Aquaman. Uh, all right. But I used Breakout. Perhaps you didn't. But this is the movie that springboards her to the kind of money that you are suggesting she should earn. It should, yeah. I guess. That's what it seems like, absolutely. And either, I mean, other than Aquaman, which was released in 2018, how many movies has she booked? Well, she booked Bo Bo Aquaman 2. Right. And she did The Stand, which was a significant television show. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, but outside of the Aquaman franchise, she obtained only one role, movie role, since 2018, right? That's one way to look at right. it. The industry also knows that she's planned to be in the next move, and they understand yeah. her production schedule, so she's not going to go after films that would conflict with a mega box office movie. So mm -hmm. there's scheduling and conflict issues as well that her, she and her team would consider. So from... When was Aquaman released in 2018? Uh-huh. I don't remember. It's December. I, it was either December 2018 and, and then, it depends on where it was in mm -hmm. the world. It started in December 2018 and then it, it moved out, you know, into 2018. How many months between December 2018 
and the Waldman statements went by. Oh, uh, 12, I think, 15 or 16, if my mother's Okay. She got one role during that, that 15 or 16 month period during the entirety of the post Aquaman boost, right? She got stand. Right. And then she was in discussions for the films as they were getting ready to go. Okay. But she didn't get another role for 16 months between the release mm -hmm. of Aquaman and what you say are the Waldman statements. Well, she got the stand. She got one TV role. Wow. A pretty significant TV role. Yes, yeah, for a Stephen King novel. Right. There's a lot of she those. She was in a movie, though. I'm sorry? She was in a movie that was released after Aquaman. Oh, really? What movie are you referring to? Gully. Oh, well, I don't know when that was shot, so you'd have to tell me when it was shot. Movies get released She's at the different expert. time frames. She's the expert. Guys, she's the expert on this. It can be shot in 2016 and not get released until 2018. So yeah. you'd have to tell me. We'd have to look yeah, at she's the, you know, the actual filming dates of, of she Gully knows to, to, about for me to this. talk to you about that. She wasn't initially cast in Gully, was she? I, I, I'm not familiar with the casting process of Gully. Do um, you know who Alice Eve is? M who? Alice Eve. Alice Eve. Sounds familiar, but I'm not. I'm not recalling who she, she, she is. She's an time. actress. Been in any number of movies. You don't know who she is. Again, I know her name, but you I, don't, I don't know, know who she is. Like how he asked. She's in Star Trek. Great. Right. <laughs> uh, she was in one of those breakout roles, Star Trek. Oh my God! You don't, Great. You don't even know who she is. I I talked to you about Star Trek before. I'm not a big Star Trekian. Okay. Star Trek again. Ms. Hurd replaced Jesus Alice Eve Christ. in the movie Gully, right? I don't know the casting process. I don't know who starred in that movie. Do you know what? She was paid. How much? Who? Ms. Hurd. Uh, for Gully? Yeah. Can you tell me when that was in? No, no, I don't. But what, what was the filming date of and what was the start date of Gully? Do you, you didn't look at the Gully contract when you were making an analysis of oh of my damages. god i don't recall whether i looked at it or not so that's <clears> a no <throat> did, did you understand that she was making twenty one hundred and ninety dollars per week for gully can you tell me when it was shot when does that contract get that's negotiated? not a lot of money lazy well, thanks to the ten dollars the contract is negotiated prior to the release of aqua okay so she signs this contract uh -huh. for twenty one ninety. Is there a? Do you know what the Screen Actors Guild low budget agreement minimum scale is? Oh no! It changes from year to year. It depends on what year and what the size Boy, of the budget. There's actually the three or four different scale, num uh, you know, benchmarks. Oh so no! When there's a low budget, it can I be wonder. a micro budget. It can be a minimum budget. At low budget, it, there's there's like four or five wonder. different scales that they use when it gets to anything other than a studio film. It's twenty one ninety. And oftentimes, actors do passion projects, and that has nothing to do with uh, or something that they really love to do, or they think that would be good for the career. It doesn't have anything to do with the the fee made on the on micro the film. budget. Yeah. All right. How much? Let us know. He's getting it ready. What's a loan out? A loan out? A loan out is the corporation that a an actor will use so that their money comes in through a corporation, and then that corporation technically loans out the actor's services. Uh, to the production. So oh, they, the loan out is taxes. the corporation that the actor uses, and then they loan out the services to yeah. the you know production company. Yeah. It's just a, really for tax purposes. Nah. Do you know of any movie that Ms. Heard booked immediately prior to Aquaman other than Gully? Well, I know she did Justice League. Um, I, I, I don't remember the dates and times of the filming of the other ones. Mm -hmm. you, you always have to look at the filming dates. Right. <clears throat> um, 
You talked about Going Mr. Schnell. Going has 1.7 IMDb. Going was in his chart, right? 1.7 out of like what? 1.8. Uh, I don't. I don't remember where Gully was. Right. Because you have no idea about. Did it. you look closely at his chart? Pardon? Did you look closely at his chart? At Mr. Schnell's chart? Yeah. Um, I looked at the numbers with respect to the social media campaigns. Is what I was looking That's at Mr. 10. Schnell for. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Um, do you oh. know whether any of the dates of the Waldman statements even appear in Mr. Schnell's chart? I, I don't remember. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You talked a little bit about Q scores and Mr. Bonnier. Do you remember that? Yes. Did you get nervous? Yeah. For Miss Heard, Mr. Banya used Q scores from immediately after Aquaman, right? Again, if you want to show me something, I can I can answer. I don't remember every word of Mr. Banya's, but I remember talking about the dates with you earlier. Right. But do you you don't know as you sit here today whether the Q scores that Mr. Banya used were were after Aquaman but before the Waldman statement? He used a couple different scores based on uh -huh. um, dates. He didn't. I don't remember if they were uh, correlated to the statements or not. I remember years more than anything else. Again, I looked at thousands and thousands of pages of documents, so I don't remember exactly what he said. Okay. Even before the Waldman statements, Ms. Heard had very high negative Q scores. Isn't that correct? Hmm. Very negative high Q scores. No, very high negative Q. Scores. That's what I said. Very high negative Q scores. Um, we, I remember discussions of a lot of Q scores. Uh -huh. I, I don't remember exactly what, what or when, which score or whether it was. Net, but, so, in your analysis, you didn't consider IQ, yeah. Ms. Hurd's negative Q scores as a restraint on what she might earn on a going forward basis. That's true. No, Q scores change all the time. Ms. Hurd's Q, Ms. Hurd's, Ms. Hurd's IMDb score has been one. And it's been 300. Mr. Depp's Q score has been one, and it's been 253. You know, Q scores change all the time. Scores change all the time. They're based on current events and and movie releases. Uh huh. You talked a little bit about Mr. Depp's damages. Uh oh. Um, did you talk? Who's Jerry Bruckheimer? Who's Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer of uh, the Pirates franchise. Well, ah. he's a huge producer of a lot of movies, but he happens to be the producer of the Pirates franchise. You didn't talk to him prior to your testimony? Personally, no. No. And you didn't, you didn't have other people talk to him on your behalf, did you? I, I, uh, me personally, no. I did no. not talk to ah. Mr. Bruckheimer. And you've never spoken with Mr. Bruckheimer about why Mr. Depp has not appeared in a six pirate movie? There has been no six pirate movie. There is not a pirates movie titled Pirate Six yet. Right. Right. Or ever. But you haven't talked to Mr. Bruckheimer as to whether Mr. D Depp was going to appear in the movie? Mr. From things that I've read in, in uh, newspaper publications and emails. Just I like Aquaman Mr. 3, yeah. I was uncertain whether Mr. Depp would star in. Right. But you haven't talked to him. And you've never spoken with Sean Bailey about this, right? No. Or anyone at Disney. I actually spoke. I actually put a call to somebody at Disney, and they didn't want to talk on the record. Are yeah. You you called somebody at Disney, and they didn't want they didn't want to talk to you. No. Again, as I said, studios don't want to talk about their stars, whether they want to preserve a relationship that may or may not be used in the future. So it's it's their tendency not to talk okay. about people they yeah, are of in course. business with. That makes so sense. you have no personal knowledge why Mr. Depp hasn't made a six pirate movie. Well, as I said, there is no six pirate movie. Right. You, but you don't know why. You have no personal knowledge why. I don't work at Disney now. Did you listen Isn't to Mr. That Wigg something? Wiggum's testimony in this trial? I read Mr. Wiggum's testimony. Yeah. And Mr. Wiggum said he had, to watch Mr. Depp yeah, had a deal for the movie, right? It's not good. 
I, I've, I think Mr. Wiggum did, the other agent, uh -huh. uh, Mr. Carino said he did not. And as there is no, uh, as there is no Pirates movie, there have been no deals negotiated, and that's what Ms. Jacobs also testified to. But Mr. Wiggum testified to <laughs> something. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, correlate, as we say, to the other two agents testifying. Oh my God. You've Jesus, man. a portion of the reason that uh, Mr. Depp has, get a, has received a negative, uh -huh. has received a variety of negative uh, comments in Hollywood, is that he engages in lawsuits. One of the one of the uh, elements that has contributed to a lot of negative press and attention is due to the lawsuits and the activity and the behaviors that we talked about earlier have been brought into the limelight. Mr. Depp's lawsuit here has generated negative publicity for Ms. Hurd, correct? That's true. Yes. That lawsuit, until she's filed a counterclaim, didn't relate to the Waldman statements, did it? Mr. Depp's lawsuit? Yeah. No, it, it, we talked about that. It, it was pertaining to the uh, her op-ed piece. Right. It, it related uh -huh. to what Pardon? Ms. Hurd said. Yeah. I'm sorry? This, Mr. Depp's lawsuit relates to what Ms. Hurd said and, and not to what Mr. Waldman said. That would, well, it related to the op-ed piece that Ms. Hurd wrote. Right. So Mr. Waldman's statements have no connection to the negative publicity that Ms. Hurd has uh, received relative to this trial. Oh, correct? no. Calls for speculation, foundation, oh, no. outside the scope. Any response? We're looking uh -huh. for a causal connection here. Wow. Sustain the objection. Next question. Yeah. When was the last time you met with Miss Hurd? I only met Miss Hurd at lunch today. Okay, that's the first time you talked to her. First time I met her. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, what's your compensation for testifying here today? Oh. Uh, for t for a testimony, it's six hundred fifty dollars an hour. What has been your compensation to date for providing uh, the assistance that you have in this case? There's a lot of people here probably. I've been working on the be case for about witness. three years, and okay, over three years, how much? I bet four hundred. Over the three years, I believe it's around sixty thousand dollars. That's it. You said sixty. Yeah, over three years. All right. I have no further questions. All right, redirect. Thank That's you, Robin. it. I'm going to make it definitely fit within that 5:30. Okay. Um, okay. Zone, you asked a number of questions about the different social media, uh -huh. the negative, uh, and how do you know that it relates to the Waldman Depp statements? Do you recall all those questions? Yes. yes. Okay. The the social media that was connected, and, and some of that was your testimony, some Jessica Kovacevich, and some of it was Mr. Schnell, actually tracked the language from the three statements from Weldman, correct? Objection leading. Sustained. Okay. Oh what if God, any you're not gonna uh, finish them in the last uh, 10 efforts minutes, were made to track the negative social media that caused the damages that you've attributed? Objection leading. Please don't let her do anything. Overruled. So L'Oreal did a lot of research. Um, William Morris did a lot of research. Mr. Schnell did a lot of research. And in those conversations, those were also connective tissues to the negative social media campaign and the Waldman statements. Uh -huh. right. And they connected back to those three statements. Yes. Yeah. Objection leading. And what, if any, connection did they have to those three statements? 
again, they we, we talked about this earlier. We talked about some of the hashtags being similar. We talked right. about the Wald or Waldman or the Wald Minion. So there were a lot of connective uh -huh. tissues between the uh, negative social media social media campaigns yeah. and the Waldman statements. Okay, and I'm going to jump because I think this is part of this. So you were asked some questions about Mr. Hamada. Do you recall that? Mm -hmm. Yes. And asked whether he testified that um, uh, th whether anything Mr. Depp said or anything Mr. Waldman said yeah, had yeah, anything yeah. to do with their initial decision not to exercise the option to Aquaman two. Do you recall that testimony? Or that I recall question. those questions. Just question, said it. Yes. Okay. Now, the testimony from Mr. Schnell tracked the 1.2 million. Um, tracers to January 2021, correct? Objection leading. Uh -huh. do, do you remember what month that was until? Right, so when Mr. Schnell did his analysis, it was from April of 2020 to January 2021. And when did Warner Brothers tell Amber Heard and her agents they were not exercising her Aquaman 2 contract? It was in February of 2021. All right. And what, if anything, did Mr. Hamada say about whether the reason they did that was because of the 1.2 million uh, negative social media tweets and Instagrams and, they probably and didn't other say communications? Anything about it. Objection, no foundation. Had any impact? Sustained. Sustained. Next question. Do, do, are you aware of whether he said anything about that? Oh, no. I recall in the Warner Brothers Objection, file. hearsay. Sustained. Oh, my God. Do you know? whether that had any impact. Objection what? hearsay. Uh, she just waits for I'm her to now, talk. She's allowed to rely on hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Oh, my God. All right. You were asked a whole lot of questions about the different Jesus. comparables. Um, and so I'm just going to go to this again. Of That's all three. the different movies, of all of those comparables, which movie was the highest grossing of all of them? Uh-huh. Again, I believe it's Aquaman. I mean, everybody talks about Aquaman being one of the highest, if not the highest grossing films. Certainly the highest DC comic film or in that superhero world. But Spider Man again, made more money. I don't want to say it was the highest, but I think it was very close to it. Spider Man do, do made more. Do you know whether Walter Hamada admits it was I the think. highest grossing uh, DC film? Yes, he said that, yes. Okay. So when you're looking at all the comparables, what if any relevance in DC. is there okay. to the I degree of success Wait. of that DC superhero movie. Objection. I thought she was Foundation. comparing to the other actors. I, she can speak to that, Your Honor. Like That's and, and all that. Do you know the answer to that question? Do you know? I was confused. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I forgot it. No, I have to admit. <laughs> okay, so let, let's go backwards. Um, so what if, oh, do you know whether it makes a difference whether how successful that DC superhero movie is in uh, what types of films they'll be able to get in the future. Objection, Foundation. Huh? I'm asking the Foundation. If you want to ask the Foundation, go ahead. That, I'm sorry, that's what I thought I was asking. Do, do you know whether that plays any role, the degree of success? Mm -hmm. Customarily, when a Objection, film... Objection, Foundation. Ask her how she knows. How do you know? In 20, 25 years of being in the film industry, it's oh customary God. for when a movie does such an extraordinary amount at the box office, it shines a very mm -hmm. bright light on the actors, especially if they're in lead roles. And it's customary that they will get, not customary, it is, uh, I don't want to use the word standard, but it, 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 it is very frequent that a star in a movie that has performed so well at the box office and with a role model character that Mira was, that she would have gotten uh, other roles and worked role model. quite a bit afterwards, and that movie would have helped her Focus career. on the, I mean, the word no model. Okay. And with all these the comparables, uh, when you uh, gave the range to this jury of 45 to 50 million in estimating this over this period of time, did you put Amber Heard's estimated damages ranges above all those other comparables? No, again, I was very specific in using the actual negotiated rates that Ms. Heard's agents were able to get for her in that contract yeah, sure. and use that as a precedent. So again, I always wanted to be grounded uh -huh. in what Ms. Heard actually 
was in contract for and what her agents negotiated. Mm -hmm. And I used that as the baseline for the financial numbers of her loss. I used the comparable actors to show how consistently they all worked okay. and how their careers moved forward after being in a box office. Okay. okay. Um, uh, you asked about Disney and uh, the Pirates 6 again. Uh, what, if any, knowledge do you have of whether Disney is willing to pay Mr. Depp $300 million and a million alpacas? Objection, no foundation. <laughs> Oh, here we go with the I'm alpacas asking her, again. What, if anything, does she know about whether Disney is... If you can lay a foundation. Okay. Okay, did, did great. You, did you listen to or did you read the Disney testimony in this case? I did, yes. All right. And? What do you recall Disney saying about whether they were willing to pay Mr. Depp $300 million and, a, and give him a million alpacas? They, have, they would not be willing to pay $300 million and give him alpacas. Thank you. How many? You were asked about... The defecation. Uh, what, if any, recollection, recollection or knowledge do you have about whether that social media negative campaign that you've testified had the words defecation in it or poop? Objection. No foundation. It didn't. I know that the word poop and the hashtag poop is used. Okay. Was what? that move, any move to strike. Uh, sustain the objection. Okay. Move to strike. Yep, Next question. Done. Okay. Um, in your review of the social say it, media say campaign, it all, and the man. negative social media campaigns Damn it, that man. you testified to with this jury, that include the L'Oreal, that include the WME, uh -huh. that include Mr. Schnell, and include what you've done, what, if any, recollection do you have of how many of those that are influencing your connections to the defamation statements yeah. include the words poop or defecation? Uh, ob objection. Come They're on. using the wrong word. Uh -huh. She's using the wrong was word. The hashtags that was connected to the statement. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it wasn't poop or defecation. It was another one. Say it. You were asked I want her about own the time to period say it. between the defamatory statement, between the release of Aquaman 2 uh, in December 2018. Uh -huh. Aquaman 1. Aquaman 1, thank you and the defamatory start statements that were in April 2020 and June 2020. Do you recall that testimony? I remember that questioning, yes. Okay. Um, during that time, were you aware of whether Aquaman 2 was in discussions with Amber Heard about scheduling the filming of Aquaman 2? Uh -huh. In the period between the, the statements and before. I'm going before. Okay, I'm sorry. talking about the period of time when they released Aquaman 1 okay. and the April 8, first of the defamatory Shit, statements. Right. Do you know whether Aquaman, whether Warner Brothers was in discussions already with Amber Heard about scheduling her for Aquaman 2? Objection, hearsay. Do you know? I'm asking her whether you know. If you, I'll sustain it as the hearsay. Okay. Do you have knowledge of whether Aquaman was in discussions with Amber during that period? Objection, hearsay. Nah. I, I don't know how to... I, 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 I don't know. Ask her foundation. Foundation. I don't know. Right. right. Um, Uh-oh, um, she got one minute on the clock. Uh, well, Amber received an early draft of the script. Uh -huh. Amber's agents were in discussion. Objection, hearsay. Nah. I, I think she can say that. Sustained. Okay. Um, so what is, in bad. your experience, based on getting scripts, what does that mean? <laughs> It's far I'm from for experience. In my experience with the movie, as high profile as like Aquaman, they keep the scripts very tight. You know, they don't let anybody read them. They're numbered. They have your name. Time's up. So if you're getting a script for a movie such as Aquaman that's kept tightly, tightly close to the vest, if you will, uh -huh. by the studio, you are going to, they're, they're, can, they want you to be in the movie. Otherwise, they would never give you the script. Okay. Okay. And so if a script was given to ding, Amber ding, Heard ding. Yep, before let's go. the eight, first April 8, 2020 uh, defamatory statement, what would that suggest based on, your, based on your knowledge that you've just testified to? Objection, speculation. It's not speculation. It's overruled. Oh, shit. Again, if she got the script, they were going to use her in the movie. That was their plan. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is this witness subject to recall? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. So you're still an expert, so you, you can have a seat in okay. the courtroom. I'm, I'm still looking. Okay, you okay. sorry. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh oh, she might be back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this comes to the end of our day. Holy right, so shit! Please do not do any outside research tonight. And, oh uh, my don't talk god! Don't talk about the case, okay? And we'll see you in the morning. Oh my and early god! At 9 right? Okay. Thank you. What a fucking day! What an expert, guys! Wow! What a fucking expert! I just, I can't believe that. Kept it close to the vest. Uh, proceeds to spoil the movie in public court of law. What? I mean, they gotta do it. That's what it is. Even the judge was surprised? Yeah, she was. Dude, that guy? Right. Just a few planning notes, okay? What's this? Um, after testimony tomorrow, and we've excused the jury, we'll go ahead and have the proffers that you requested, Mr. Rottenborn. We'll do those tomorrow after. Is that okay? Okay. Does that sound good? All right, we'll do those. Uh, Right after, like right now, tomorrow. Yeah, okay. all right. That should give you, with all with the proper you need board. to do for the I mean, how okay. do you go with somebody all named right. that? All right, and then whenever all the testimony is done, possibly at this point it would be Thursday yeah. afternoon after the jury is excused, uh, we'll go over the remaining jury instructions. I have 300 That's advisement. That's like the we'll antagonist those, in a Tim we'll also, Burton film. If there's any other from the evidence like this week board. that we need to talk about, we can discuss those as well after the jury's gone on Thursday evening oh or if the evidence is done before then, okay? And just as times up to this minute, uh, the plaintiff has used 45 hours and 24 minutes. Ooh. The defendant has used 57 hours and 6 minutes, which means the plaintiff has Three left 15 hours, hours and, five, left. and 51 minutes, and the defendant has 4 hours and 9 minutes left, oh, four. okay? So that's where we're at. Jesus. All right, anything else for this evening? That is not Your looking Honor, good. The last witness, I, it appears that is on the plaintiff's wit witness list is Mr. Depp, and I was just hoping we would get an answer as to what. Defendant's witness list. Oh. Yeah, and defendant's witness list. I don't know. Are you still changing an witness? I mean, I'm not sure. We're, we're discussing. Okay. We have no idea what we're doing. Okay. All right, everybody, have a good evening. We're panicking. Okay. Oh man. Like, yep, they're gonna bring him back on the stand, which is smart. I think that makes sense. Obviously, it does. Um. I am just so fucking shocked about that. Like, that lawyer is fucking savage.